Hi everyone! In the last video, we explored how to create multiple cloud layers that hit the three aircraft and terrain at the beginning of the shot. In this video, we'll start looking at the cloud layers that make up the dynamic sky composition we see towards the end of the shot. We can begin with the thunderclouds visible in the background as the camera swings around the three aircraft. The thunderclouds are comprised of three individual cloud layers. One for the lower base of the clouds, a second for the column that extends high up into the atmosphere, and a third layer as the cloud expands into the upper atmosphere, forming what is called in meteorology terms an anvil. For the remainder of this video, we've pulled back the camera in order to be able to see the thundercloud layers in their entirety. We've also disabled the other cloud layers used to hide the aircraft at the beginning of the shot in order to speed up the refreshing of the 3D preview. In the Atmosphere node list, click on the Add Cloud Layer button and add the Easy Cloud preset Mid-Level Alto Cumulus Castellanus Large. Rename it to something descriptive like Thunderclouds Base. The base of the thundercloud should be just above the mountain range, so set the cloud base altitude to around 1,500 meters. We want the thunderclouds to be off in the distance, so we'll make the cloud layer a bit smaller by reducing the radius value to around 25,000 meters. And then position the cloud layer deeper into the background by either moving the cloud layer's handles, like we did in the previous video, or entering the numeric values directly into the cloud layer's center input fields. An x-axis value around negative 26,000 meters and a z-axis value of negative 33,000 meters should be a good starting position. Let's increase the amount of clouds so they have a more solid looking base and fill up more of the volume. Change the coverage value to about 1.6. Terrigen provides multiple models for this type of cloud, so we'll choose the model TG3.9.04, which tends to produce rougher and more billowy clouds. This cloud layer seems a bit tall, so reduce it by changing the cloud depth value to 5,000 meters. Because this cloud layer is so far away, we can reduce the number of voxels that make up the cloud, which will help to reduce the rendering time. Under the Optimization tab, change the millions of voxels value to around 5. This completes the base of the thundercloud. So let's move on to the cloud column that rises into the upper atmosphere. For this cloud layer, we want to have full control over all the fractal noise patterns that define the shape of the cloud. So this time, let's add a mid-level generic cloud preset and rename it to something descriptive like Thunder Cloud Column. The generic preset allows us to access the fractal noise settings or use completely different shaders to generate the cloud shapes. Position the cloud layer so that it's approximately near the center of the thundercloud base layer. Then restrict its radius to be smaller than the thundercloud base layer, around 20,000 meters. By default, this cloud layer's depth is only 150 meters, and we need it to reach high into the atmosphere, so increase its cloud depth value to 20,000 meters. The shape of this cloud should remain mostly cylindrical, so under the Tweaks tab, disable Taper Top and Base. We don't want the fractal noise pattern generating the cloud to have a lot of empty space within it. Click on the Pattern button below the Atmosphere node list to gain access to the settings, and then click on the Shader Preview button to open a new Shader Preview window to see the fractal noise pattern. Click on the Zoom Out button to get a larger view of the fractal noise pattern. By increasing the Coverage Adjust value under the Patterns Density tab, we can reduce the black or empty space and increase the white or amount of clouds within the fractal pattern. We would like the cloud column to be the most dense along its center and less dense at its edges. And we can do this by assigning a shader as a mask to the fractal noise. Click on the green plus button to the right of the Mask by Shader setting and select Create New Shader then Color Shader, then Simple Shape.
Open up the preview window for this shader as well. Our objective is to create a circular shaped gradient that is the brightest in the center and darkest at the edges. So change the type of shape to circle slash ellipse and the size value to no more than the original radius of the cloud layer. We could also use the size value to make the cloud column thinner if we wanted to. To create a smooth gradient, set the edge profile to bevel and the edge width to 100 and the edge units to percent. This will create a gradient using the color values of the apply main color, which is currently set to white, and the apply edge color, which is currently set to black. The white color will start at the center of the simple shape shader and transition to black at the edges. When used as a mask for the fractal noise pattern, the resulting gradient values are multiplied with the fractal noise pattern values. This leaves the fractal noise pattern values untouched at the center of the column and softens or fades out the values towards the edges. We can adjust the height of the cloud column as needed by increasing the cloud altitude value. The last step for this cloud layer is to optimize the number of voxels used. And like the Thunder Cloud base layer, it's far enough away so that we can substantially reduce the number of voxels needed. The third cloud layer of our Thunder Cloud consists of a relatively flat layer at the top, which is expanding beyond the radius of the other cloud layers. To create this layer, add another mid-level generic cloud layer and rename it to Thunder Cloud's Anvil. Position the cloud in approximately the same place as the other two Thunder Cloud layers, but higher above the Thunder Cloud column layer by using the cloud altitude value. Click on the Pattern button to access the Fractal Noise settings. And increase the Feature Scale to 15,000 in order to create fewer but much larger areas of interest in the cloud pattern. Then, increase the Coverage Adjust value to fill in the cloud volume. In shaping the final look of the Thunder Cloud's Anvil layer, we want to indicate that it has spread and drifted beyond the extent of the lower Thunder Cloud layers. And while it is a tall or deep layer, it is much less opaque than the lower layers. Let's increase the radius value to about 65,000 so that it's bigger than the other layers. Then increase its depth value to about 5,000 to make it taller. To compensate for increasing the depth of the layer, Decrease the cloud density value to 0.01 .01, so that the sunlight can still penetrate through the cloud layer. To make it appear like the anvil layer is drifting away from the column, we can offset the center position as desired. Or insert a transform node between its density fractal node and the density shader input. The transform node has the added benefit of being able to rotate the cloud layer. Just as with the other two thundercloud layers, we can reduce the number of voxels used for the anvil layer to about 2 million. This completes the thunderclouds, and even though they extend beyond our point of view in much of the shot, they contribute to the overall look of the environment by casting shadows across the other clouds and terrain. In our next video, we'll continue to add cloud layers to build up the final environment for the shot. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.